Want to talk a Maybe. little bit about the UK? Sure. Thanks for that, Young. Uh, so we're, I'm going to first dive here in the UK. There's some very interesting data we got from our survey. So uh, the first one I would like to mention is that 30% of the consumers bought online at least once a month before the outbreak. So here in the UK, we were talking about much more, uh, let's say, brick and mortar population. And uh, there was a segment of the population, those that aged from uh, 25 to 34, there were the ones that were buying uh, groceries more frequently online. So that would buy most of their grocery online or most of the time, but that was just a small segment of the population. And another thing that is very interesting Yang, is that 42% of the population had never bought or bought online only occasionally. So we're seeing a huge shift here in the United Kingdom because of the COVID and, and everything, all the restrictions that are put in place to the, to, due to the lockdown. Uh, it is a critical time here for grocery retail sales, especially with the growing number of people starting to shop online. You're gonna see in some of the slides I'm gonna show, there's digital cues for buying in Ocado and also not only in the groceries, but also in the, in the drug stores. So, it, so much need it's right now, you know, to buy, to do your grocery shopping online, but the, there are uh, capacity constraints in the e-commerce right now that have to be addressed. As you can see, 50% uh, of the uh, of the of the population complains that the website was not working at all or not correctly. So uh, I myself experienced, you know, having to be two hours in a queue to be able to get into the supermarket to find there was no slot available, right? So, uh, and there's something that was interesting that 32% of the population is buying more than it was buying before. And that's why, because people were stocking and they also are expecting to buy even more. So half of the population is expecting to increase the purchase frequency, right? So uh, when you have a look at the next slide, you're gonna see some uh, other interesting data here. So there are acute issues developing within e-commerce. What happens is that uh, newcomers to the grocery retail, they realize that uh, uh, slots are lacking and there are items that are not available. So that generates a negative experience in a crucial conversion time of the groceries. So uh, remember what we said before, just 30% of the people were buying online before. Now, you know, there more than half a percent is buying online, but they're not having a good customer experience. There are several complaints on post-sale support. There is even a, a friend of mine that told me that she tried to buy some burrata at Ocado and it was a huge burrata. When the burrata got home, they switched it for a small truffle burrata that was 10 times smaller than the original one she bought. So, you know, item, the items are available, but it's not exactly what you're looking for and they, they're switched on, on, your, on your cart. And also many times you have the items available, but there's no slot available within the next day. So just people are, people are just giving up. Besides that, uh, omnichannel is still something that uh, people want, but you know, it's hard to do. So items are available online, but there are no uh, delivery slots open in grocery stores. You know, they're aiming to, to help consumers increasing their click and collect capabilities because there, there are constraints in, uh, door, in, in delivering at your door, but the process still runs in the usual constraint capacity website. So it's not, it's not getting anywhere. Uh, there are some practices and restrictions that the government is also you know, supporting uh, the retail. So the government set aside competition laws so the supermarkets can coordinate efforts to ensure food reaches consumers. But, uh, you know, the perception because of the lack of slots is that you won't get the food when you want and when you need, you know, to top up your pantry. Uh, also, it's very interesting that in the beginning when people were stockpiling, there was a uh, lack of inventory. But right now, food is arriving every day at the shops and most manufacturers have ramped up production by 50%. Um, but... At the same time, CPGs are not ready. Although 20, uh, sorry, 92% of the execs agree that e-commerce strategy is important, only 43 have defined one. So there is a gap here to be fulfilled. And it's really interesting if you, if you in the next slide, I'm gonna show you something very interesting is an experiment of Kraft Heinz here in the UK. 
So uh, because of the stockpiling, a lot of the food, team food was, was uh, vanished, right? So people were looking to stock uh, corn, beans and meat in cans, but there was not, uh, there were not anymore in the supermarket. So Kraft Heinz accelerated an experiment to, to sell uh, tins and, and their cans by their e-commerce. So you can buy here in the UK 16 cans for 10 pounds. And it's very interesting because uh, I think this is accelerating one CPG, you know, a process to move forward and experiment a little bit of the direct commerce to, to consumers. In the next slide, you can see something that I was just mentioning before is that um, you see the virtual queue Ocado created. So Ocado is in a, a constrained situation because all the picking is automatized and done by robots. Uh, it's a different situation from Tesco because Tesco uh, has hired a bunch of people so they can do picking in different stores. So Tesco is able to uh, increase the capacity differently from Mercado. Uh, here on the left uh, side of the slide, you also see a little bit about the suspension of the service. So myself, I haven't been able to buy, and I was a very loyal Ocado, you know, promoter and customer before, and I haven't been able to buy so far because I'm not in the priority list, I'm not vulnerable, so uh, I just can't get a, a space in the queue. And it's, it's, like, it's kind of like a lottery, you know? Another day one friend said, oh, I went there, I entered in the supermarket website and there was a slot, I had to get it. So, you know, you get very excited when you have the chance to buy your, <laughs> to do your grocery online lately. And the next slide, you can also see a very interesting perspective on how corporate social responsibility, it's, it's changing, right? Can you see the next slide? So in the next slide, you're gonna see uh, here, I love this, this picture here uh, on, on the middle that people say, you know, don't forget the elderly when you're doing your shopping. And this old lady here is, is requesting for more wine, right? Uh, on the right, right hand side, you can also see some unsung heroes as this gentleman here that he's extremely happy because he was able to clean all the carts and you know, posting himself here in Twitter, and Morrison's that is trying to, to deliver in different ways in the doorstep delivery. So a lot of things are going on and there's a resignification of corporate social responsibility during COVID times. There are some things, and I wanna be fair, that grocers are doing well. So when you see in the next slide, you're gonna see that grocery shopping, as everybody knows, because everybody has to, <laughs> to put food in their pantry, no, that it has been, become burdensome. It's a weekly duty you have to do. And there's a lot of discussion around that. Like, how do I do it in an ethical way? How, how do I, I diminish the impact of the psychological workout I have to do? So, you know, it's critical that grocers also understand how to protect uh, the customer experience and their employees. Here you're gonna see on the uh, left-hand side, um, a cashier from Aldi and he's protected. It seems like a bubble, right? Uh, glass bubble. And here on the right hand side, you see a lot of discussion uh, by bloggers on how to do grocery shop safely during the pandemic. So uh, there are some key takeaways that I would like to share with you addressing customer needs. So it is important to put customers and employees at ease. So 66% of the people that answer our survey says that they get stressed out on the way they have to do their uh, grocery shopping, especially if they have to go to brick and mortar. So it's, it's very important to, to create solutions to manage queues. Uh, there are, another day we went to the supermarket here in London and it took us one hour to get into the supermarket, right? Something that would never happen before. Uh, Supermarkets are trying to provide clean sanitary environment in their stores, but it's still a bit clumsy. And it's necessary you know, to evolve a little bit more how we, you know, we keep social distancing within the stores, you know, what kind of policies we're gonna put in place. There's also a very important issue to be addressed is how to uh, manage demand and communicate, right? Uh, we've passed uh, peak demand, but there are still some in instances where the consumers you know, are looking for uh, some some uh, SKUs and they're not finding as the slide you, you showed uh, before, Young. Flour is still missing. It's a mystery. We don't know what's going on, but people are looking for. Maybe they are cooking more, baking more, but, you know, we have to figure out also this. It's those tiny little bits 
of discomfort, you know, that pile up when you are in a lockdown situation that if brands address in a different way, you know, they're going to create a generate loyalty, right? So it, it is important to understand, you know, uh, and to communicate quite often about what is out of stock, anticipate replenishment so people don't get frustrated when they are, you know, hunting for food. And third, uh, it's important to create a communication connection. So there are some uh, some grocery retailers that they, they, they are communicating in a new way, and, and and also balancing you know sell and social good. So I'm going to show you in the next slide uh, two very interesting uh, pictures. The left one is uh, about is a com communication of a club here in London in the city called The Net. And they are closed for obvi obviously reasons, right? As all the hospitality is, but their concierge is starting to post some tips on, you know, how how to live a better life during lockdown. So the brand is still connecting, you know, with their with the community in some way. On on the middle of this slide, you can see Tesco, and Tesco is trying, you know, to educate consumers and protect the community in some way. And the right hand side, you can see Waitrose you know, helping, supporting the National Health Service. So uh, next slide, I'm gonna show you something very interesting. So uh, when I was in Berlin last year, I visited this startup called HelloFresh. And uh, what they do is basically they have uh, meal boxes, right? And as uh, Young was saying, you cook from scratch. What they do is they send you the items and the recipe and you can cook it at home. So you see how, how the stock of HelloFresh, you know, just rise uh, immensely in the last days because of the lockdown. And other uh, competitors such as Mindful Chef, Chef is also you know, uh, getting a lot of traction in the market and Gusto is in such a high demand, they are not taking new orders. So the, the, the message here is that there are growth opportunity for new channels. 15% of the population is experimenting new alternatives such as meal kits or organic and meat fish boxes. And the ones that are prepared that have capacity, you know, are getting the chance to be tried out by, by the population and they might get these customers after the lockdown is over. Down to, now, 